My name is Patricia Cronin. I'm an artist from New York. Um, I'm interested in the topic of g gay marriage in the United States because um, heterosexual people can get married, but gay people can't. Um, in a few specific states of the 50 states that make up the United States, you can go and get what they call a domestic um, partnership certificate, um, which is largely symbolic. Um, or you can get um, uh, a civil union document. But the federal government of the United States doesn't acknowledge these documents. And it's only a few states. And there are many um, court battles going on right now. California is one. And um, in New York, it's not possible to get married. It's uh, quite painful f for a lot of people. So if I went to Spain, it's legal to get married in Spain for gay people. but. Um, I would come back to the United States and not, they wouldn't acknowledge it at all. Some people wonder, well, why is gay marriage so important? Um, if my partner gets sick and is in the hospital, only immediate family are allowed in to visit. I am not considered immediate family. This is very disturbing. Um, you have to produce these legal papers. You have to pay a lawyer to draw up the legal papers to then have access to your partner, your life companion, your um, partner, I think is a good word. In my experience, most heterosexual people maybe don't understand that there are approximately 1,200 benefits to being married. And when they say, oh, but you can go to Connecticut or you can go to another state and get married, they don't understand that um, that still won't affect what happens where I live health insurance. I have to pay extra taxes. I'm also a professor at Brooklyn College, associate professor. And um, my partner um, is allowed, as, a, as my domestic partner, to um, um, be covered on my health insurance. But the federal government sees that as um, income to her. So I have to pay extra taxes for her. Now, if she was a man, there would be no extra money to have to pay. Um, so. It, Ultimately, I think it's more expensive to be a, a gay person in the United States between drawing up all the legal documents and all these extra things you have to pay for that are just not required of heterosexual people. Um, when people have children, um, let, um, they have to do special legal documents so that both parents, whether it's two men or two women, will be seen as the parents of the child one parent who maybe isn't the biological parent might want to pick up the child from school. Well, things have to be worked out with the school. All the legal documents have to be in place. So the federal government really gets to decide who is treated equally under the law. And they've decided that gay people should not be. The worst part about not being able to be married, yes, I would like all of these benefits, and I don't consider them indulgences that the government should be dispensing to different groups. But the, mo the saddest part is that I didn't get to have a wedding where all my family and my friends would come, as they do for heterosexual couples, and support them and root for them as a couple. And it's a party and a celebration of their love. There's no um, you can have a wedding, you can have a party, but it doesn't have the same meaning and significance. And, um, and as a lot of people do when they're young and both of their parents are there and, and their siblings and nieces and nephews. And to not have that and have people all along checking in with you and say, oh, how's it going? You know, people are very, um, oh, I hope Deb's okay. You know, they're a little distant. And I think it's just one of the saddest things that um, hasn't been able to happen with any real meaningfulness. Um I personally have experienced it. There was an art school in New York where I taught, and I had a big exhibition at the time with some um, erotic watercolors. And um, I got a nice review in the New York Times, and my, the chair of my department called me in, and he said, OK, so now we know that uh, you are a lesbian. And uh, I was not invited back to teach there anymore. I lost the job. This is probably 15 years ago. 15 years ago. So I just didn't have the, um, the access 
to lawyers or, you know, I didn't know how to do it. And it's humiliating, it's depressing. You feel penalized or, you know, um, and you feel helpless and it's, it's awful. I'm an excellent, I was an excellent teacher then. Let's see, my partner and I have, um, um, have been together for 17 years. She's an artist as well. And, um, you know, love is um, one of the greatest reasons to be alive. So we should be able to choose to be with whoever we want to be with. And I just don't see how any government can um, restrict that. I don't see how other people can judge um, if you want to be with a, you know, a woman, a man, a, a, you know. Yeah. There, there are transgender people, there are bisexual people. I mean, it's free will. We, we get to do this. It's one of the, um, I think, human, basic human rights that you get to choose who you want to love. You know, um, my partner is obviously a woman, um, but she's also an, an artist. And so we have so much in common. Um, um, we do a lot of shorthand communication. We don't have to explain so many things. Like if, I don't know, if I was an accountant and she was a librarian, maybe we'd have to explain more. But because we're both artists, it's so hard in the outside world that I think it's actually made us, um, I'm not interested in a lot of drama inside my home. I already have enough to deal with, with, with the outside world, so I think it's actually made us much closer, you know. The thing that bothers me the most about discrimination against lesbians is that it's not based on individual merit, anyone's individual character. It's just some blanket stereotype, like this group of people. It's like if we said all of a sudden, all right, all of the people who like oranges, from now on, you are not any good. <laughs> You are a second-class citizen and you will be treated differently. And ultimately, I think, besides love, what we, you know, everyone who's on the planet, what we have is a shared humanity. You know, we're born, we grow up, we have things that delight us, we have things that infuriate us, um, we have really happy times, times when we've accomplished something and we're very proud. We have other times where there are failures or disappointments, whether it's a relationship, a job, a school, something. Um, maybe a child disappoints, what, whatever it is. But that shared humanity um, is very important. But also, all we have are our own, are our names, our individual reputations. And I just think, if, if somebody is going to be, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say discriminated, but it, we should just be judged individually, not as some artificial groups. What I would say to young lesbians anywhere and everywhere is um, know yourself, look deep inside, and just try to be true to who you are. and. There's a lot of people all over the world that have done this, and um, it can be hard, but it's worth it. You will be happier, much happier, the rest of your life if you are not hiding. Um, I know in different countries it can be dangerous, so you have to find people that um, are like you, that share some of your interests and values, and, um, and you can all help each other. I think that's what we should all be doing. That's what I'm trying to do, actually, by speaking to this camera. Um, be brave, and, um, and you, you don't have to thank me, but if you can do it, then you thank yourself. I've done a lot of activism, um, especially a lot of pro-choice activism. Um, worked with, you know, ACT UP. This is all mostly in the 1990s. I mean, I've been arrested doing, doing protests, you know, did community service, I mean, all kinds of things like that. But um, back then, it's... I